Hey, good morning, guys. This episode is all about my opinions, my musings on early splits. So I follow a lot of Facebook threads uh, across multiple states. Of course, I'm located in Piedmont, Central North Carolina, uh, Burlington area, which is in the upper third of the state. I'm about an hour from the Virginia line. And so I'm watching comments and I value people's opinions who are in my same region and zone, which is kind of like Charlotte, North Carolina over to coastal Virginia. Um, and so one thing I've been seeing a lot lately is because of this warm winter that we're having, everybody's seeing uh, drones already or drone comb. And of course, this time of year, everybody's very, very excited about early splits. Um, this video is going to be my opinions and I need to say that. And of course, anytime you put yourself out there on a social media platform, I'm open to a lot of criticism. Um, and surprisingly a lot of people who agree with me. Um, but with that, I run a business and I make all my decisions based on business decisions. Now, I also have a love for bees. It just so happens that I turned what was my passion into a business, and I'm pretty good at both. Um, if you are doing something like beekeeping and the amount of labor it requires, um, and you're not having a love for bees, you're not going to enjoy this business. Um, some people would even say it's not worth it in the hours, but to me, it's a it's a passion, it's a love. So the whole point of my channel is to help people. Um, to encourage, uh, to support in any way, to lend opinions that I have based on a lot of, like I'm able to consume a lot of YouTube from people whose opinions that I value. And if you watch enough YouTube and you spend enough time, you seem to catch a common trend or common thread. I'm also blessed with knowing um, probably a dozen commercial beekeepers and we talk fairly regularly. And I'm also blessed with knowing two really well-known researchers in the biology sciences world. And one of which um, is a very good friend of mine. And she and I, we, we bounce a lot of ideas off of each other. So with that in mind, um, I'm not coming these opinions just based on my opinions, but they're kind of a combined 20 people who have at least a hundred years total experience and probably have 5,000 hives together. Um, some people would say was well, a commercial beekeeper, 5,000 hives, one person. Sure. There are those, but the whole point is, is I'm, I'm, I'm gathering these opinions from a lot of experience. So onwards to today's conversation. Um, that's kind of a backstory. So with that in mind, um, people are seeing a lot of drones already. Um, people are seeing swarm cells already. It's not like they're seeing them in every hive. They're starting to see them in one or two hives. Um, two people in the Charlotte, North Carolina area uh, on, thre on a Facebook thread yesterday commented that one guy had three and one guy had one uh, that have already swarmed. So it's happened. Spring's coming up about two or three weeks earlier this year. And so one of the things I've been working on is giving all my bees space or giving them the feeling of space and in other videos i've done uh, basically we're putting all the brood in the lower box we put a empty foundation right smack dab in the middle of the brood nest which gives them a feeling of uh, unaccomplishment and then we're moving all the other frames and food frames into the second deep box above to give the bees a feeling of space up above so let's suppose that you have just two or three or 10 hives, 20 hives at the house, and you're noticing one of your hives have swarmed and you feel the need to do an early split. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Here's what I picture. So let's say all the colonies in your area maybe have 20 to 30% of the drones that they're gonna have a month from now. And flight time is very important in beekeeping, which is why in the North Dakotas in the summer, 
you know, they've got maybe 16 plus hours of daylight per day that the bees can be out and forage. That's why they get these honey crops of 250, 350, 450 pounds of honey per colony averages. It's based on flight time. And another thing right now is temperature dependent. So currently, if you figure like today is a low of 45 last night and a high of 66 today. So the flight time there is maybe going to be six hours today, eight hours. But most days in February and March in the Piedmont of North Carolina, the flight time for bees is only going to be three hours, four hours that the bees are going to be out and about. And so let's suppose that you have a, a an early split and that queen only has three or four hours flight time and so do all the other drones. It is likely, in my mind, um, in my opinion, that that queen has a potential to have a limited amount of breeding partners. Let's say less than 10 drones on that mating flight. And that is not the kind of stock that I am trying to breed, either for you as a customer or especially for me. Um, my whole business model depends on really good genetics and polyandry, uh, which is uh, a new term that's being popularized by a Bob Benny um, interview he did with Keith Delaplane out of the UGA B Lab. But basically, polyandry just says uh, queens need to be mated with as many drones as they can on a flight. And Dr. Tar uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Dr. Tarpey at NC State Bee Lab has documented a qu virgin queen that bred with like 71 different drones in a mating flight. And apparently that's a world record. So in Keith Delaplane's study, they found that the hygienics of the hive are highly based on how many drones the queen uh, mated with. And in their study, where queens had mated with between 30 and 60 drones, the hygienics overall in the varroa mite count was very low and the hygienics were very high. Uh, those traits were expressed where there was a lot of genetic diversity. So, with that in mind, my early splits that I'm doing for nuke sales, all of my nukes get taken to a queen breeding yard that is a central location and in a mile to two miles and, and basically uh, uh, in all directions, we're going to call it a mile, um, we've got 120 hives and it's a picture of a pentagon and the central area is the nuke mating yard and there's 20 hives there. And then at each corner of the Pentagon, we've got an additional 20 hives. So a virgin queen, in order to stop inbreeding, so your drones only fly out about a half a mile and your virgin queens tend to fly out a mile to stop inbreeding. I want my virgin queens to run into my drone stock so that when they come back from this drone congregation area, uh, the queens are very well mated. And so we set this up uh, so that my nukes uh, that I'm going to sell have been bred very well because my business name is on the line, right? If, if I sell you a nuke and that queen doesn't do very well, you're not going to have good things to say about my business. So it is my goal to stretch my bees out and take so my really strong colonies. Um, we're going to try and get them to around March the 4th, March the 5th, before we take splits. And then I want my virgin queens to be emerging somewhere around March 12th and uh, going on their mating flight sometime between March 12th and March 19th, weather dependent in that first week in my drone congregation area so that when I sell those same nukes three, to four weeks later, my target date is mid-April. The reason being, I would like that queen, see, when you buy a nuke from us, 
It's not like you're we're putting Florida Queens in with North Carolina bees. The bees you're buying are the same. It's their queen. They've been in that box for a month. It's a virgin queen, 2023, and bred uh, right here locally, uh, all by my design. S so you're getting really good genetics. Most people are in, if you're buying a nuke, your goal is to be keep this year. Very few people, I'm not going to say this, not very few people, but most people aren't thinking towards next year. Most people only think of this year. But as a business, I'm always thinking towards next year. So my splits that I'm going to keep for my operation, I am uh, waiting until about the first week of May. Because by the first week of May, our nectar flow that starts around the 20th of April is on. So the nectar flow is on, the swarming rate is down. And now our drone population is at 100%. I mean, it is full blast drone mode. Those 120 colonies are all making honey. Um, they are well-established colonies. And man, the, the drones in the area, let's call that number 100%. So if you're taking an early split right now, the drone population in the air is maybe three or four hours a day on average and maybe 30 to 40% of what it's going to be in that first week of May. In that first week of May, we've got 12 hours of flight time. The bees have stretched their legs. There's a lot of drones in the area. So that's the stock I'm breeding for our personal operation at that time of year for next year, 2024. I want my queens to breed with, I mean, I'm not going to document and get into, but I want 70 drones bred with every single queen that's in my operation. I want that genetic diversity. Um, that tends to make really hygienic bees. It makes my losses over winter go down. Um, you just get less chance of chalk brood, I mean, not to say AFB and EFB, those are bacterial diseases, but overall your hygienics tend to plummet. I'm sorry, your hygienics tend to skyrocket when you have polyandry and your diseases tend to plummet across an operation. And for me as a commercial beekeeper, that's very important. Um, my business name, my reputation's on the line. So those are the reasons, those are my musings on why I don't like early splits. I do everything I can to put off swarming as long as we can. Um, everything from, I'll move brood around to balance out hives from the strong hives to the weak hives. We'll constantly, every time I'm in a hive, I'll be adding that, that uh, blank foundation right smack dab in the middle of the brood nest. I want the bees to constantly feel like they have room to avoid the swarming tendency. Um, and, and there's my musing. So guys, I'm Ashby, Ashby Farms. Thanks again. Those are just my opinions. Not everybody's going to agree. If you've liked my musings and my thoughts, um, I'm trying to grow this YouTube channel. If you've watched to this point, please subscribe. It helps me grow, uh, with the YouTube analytics. And honestly, just from me to you, I appreciate uh, you following along. Thanks again.